Hi there and welcome to the workshop. I'm Rudolf from Temco and today we're going to have a look at the business cards I'm giving with my pedals. Those business cards are a bit special because uh, obviously they have my info, but you also have a circuit board on the other side and if you solder it, you're actually building yourself a guitar pedal. So today I'm going to show you how to do it, a step by step, just like the instruction guide I've put online on my website. And that will basically be the same, but in video if you prefer hearing me talking in bad English. Anyway, just a word for the French viewers here. Chers amis francophones, vous êtes trompés de vidéo. La vidéo française est disponible ailleurs. Je vous mets le lien en description. Donc allez la voir si vous avez cliqué sur celle-ci par inadvertance. And now we can continue in English. Today we're gonna build this business card. I've done the Vibe business card in video for the French video, but this one I wanted to do something a bit different. Um, that's the business drive, so that's another drive. It's based off the DOD250 or the MXR Distortion Plus, which are basically the same circuit. And you'll need a few tools before starting, so you'll need a soldering iron, it's not powered on yet. You'll need some lead, sol lead or lead free solder, depends on what you want. Um, a lead solder is easier to work with. It's it's easy to get clean solder joints with it. But you can use lead free solder if you prefer to stay aero HS. So you re you're removing hazardous substances. Yeah, so that's uh, what I'm gonna do today. And we'll need a few tools. So a pair of pliers just to cut the wires and the component legs. Um, and also a few stuff to desolder in case you make a mistake like desoldering braid. You just put it on the solder and it removes the solder you got and the solder clamp depends on what you prefer. So you can use one or both are known if you're really sure it, this will work on the first time. Now let's start with it. So I'm gonna pour on my iron and put a bit of water on my sponge and I'll be back right now. And I'm back. If you have a good look are the business card. You see there are different type of components. So this one has a integrated circuit here, LM741. You have diodes, a pair of diodes here, resistors, capacitors and potentiometers. So you'll need to start with the uh, the smallest ones and get to the bigger ones. So we'll start with the resistors and diode. So it's quite easy to follow um, because everything is written on the board already. So here, for example, you see there is written 10K. It's for 10 kilo ohm resistors, which is 10 thousands of ohm. And that's just a unit of resistance. So 10K equals 10 kilo. Ohm. If you follow the bill of material I have gave at the end of the instruction guide, you'll have all the links you need to buy the proper components. So let's start with the 10K here. I have my different components just in front of me, so if you see my hand go there, that's because they're all here. So there is one 10k here. So just bend the, le the legs, just bend them like this, 90 degrees angle. Push the component through, all the way through. And just bend the legs so that it does not fall on the other side. And you can solder from this side now. To have a correct solder joint, you'll need first a soldering iron, obviously, a bit of solder too, so I'm gonna just get a bit. Um, what you'll need to do is put a little bit of solder on top of the iron, so you'll have extracting, uh, you'll have um, soldering fumes here. You put the iron in contact both with the leg of the component and the pad on the board, and you put a tiny bit of solder here. And voila, it's down. So, this one is a good solder joint. I'm not sure if you can see it well. There. So, if you use lead solder, it should be shiny. If it's like blank, some kind of opaque, not reflecting the light, um, you've done a, a mistake. Just reflow a little bit. So, you do the same and you put another bit of solder here. I'm gonna do the second leg and put all the other resistors and we'll get to the diode. Just one word about the resistors and placing them. 
unfortunately resistors do not have the value returned directly on them. So you'll basically need um, to either know the color code of the resistor, and if you're color blind, you can use a multimeter in on metal mode to determine what resistance it is. Let me show you. Here, I have my multimeter here. So this one should be a one megom uh, because of the color code and because I basically took it from the one megom drawer. And um, to check that, I'm gonna go to the ohm meter mode. So that measures the resistance, and I go to twenty meg um, because if that's only two hundred k, it won't measure it. That's the maximum you can read. So I select twenty meg ohm. I just put my test leads on it, and yeah. You can see it's exactly spot on. One megom, 0.99, so 99, oh, sorry, 990 kilo ohm at least. So yeah, that will determine the value of the resistors. It won't work with capacitors, but at least uh, the values are written on them. So that's that's better. Also, just one word about cutting the legs. Don't cut right on the solder. Just cut above it, like this. But we don't want to uh, ag aggress on the solder and basically kill it. You just want to cut the leg, not the solder joint you just made. And also, uh, the solder joints you need to have should not look like a circle or a bubble uh, just on the component leg, because that's not the kind of solder you want. You want it to flow a bit through. Uh, that's not critical, but here you have an example. Let me show you this one. You see the folder, the solder has, has flown through through the pad, and that's cool. Uh, it didn't on this one. That's okay too. And you want it to form a little dome or just a cone here. Uh, nothing too huge. Just on the surface, it should enclose the component leg firmly into the PCB. Now, let's go to the diodes. Um, this card is a bit interesting because you can change the diode and it will affect the sound. That's a common mod you can do on the Distortion Plus. You can choose, for example, short key diodes or germanium diodes, like 1N34A. You can use silicon diodes, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use 1N4148. And you can use LEDs and you can have different compression and distortion uh, characteristic using the diode you want. So, just as a rule of thumb, if you want to go vintage, go with the germanium diodes. If you just want to follow the guy to have a working distortion pedal, just use 14148. They're all the easiest and cheapest ones are readily available. So, I'm gonna take those here. Um, to place them correctly on the board, Pay attention to how they look and how the board looks. So you see, there are, little, there are two little bars here on the board. You have two markings. One is here and one is here. So this diode will go in that direction. This diode will go in the opposite direction. And if you look at the diode itself, you see a band, black band here on the red body. So you bend the leg. You bend the legs. It's better with the two legs. And you put it exactly in the same direction as what's written on it. So just align the black band of the diode, or the colored band of the diode if it's not black, with the marking on the PCB. So this one will go there. And the other one will go there. Now we can go with the capacitors. These ones are written a bit differently than resistors on the board. That's, this one, for example, is 10N because it's 10 nanofarad. That's one millionth of a farad, oh, sorry, one billionth of a farad, which is really small because one farad is huge in the electronic world. Not sure why they still use that unit. Anyway, have 10 nanofarad, 47 nanofarad, 10 picofarad, which is um, one picofarad is um, one thousandth of a nanofarad, that's a thousand times smaller. 
10 microfarad is one, it's basically um, 1,000 more than 10 nanofarad. So that's 10 micro, 10 micro here and one micro here. So I'm gonna put the correct values. So starting with the smaller one there. So resistors did not have an orientation. You could just place them where you want. Diodes did have an orientation, which is marked on the PCB. And for the capacitors, you'll have some with an orientation and some without them. Without it, sorry. So 10 nanofarad, this one, uh, with a square or rectangle shape, they won't have an orientation, but the circle ones, the round ones, will have one. I'm gonna show you. Let's start with the um, box one. All right. So I just I did not have a 10 picofarad on hand. Instead, I'm gonna use a 47 picofarad. It's not critical. It will just affect a bit the treble response. So this is a ceramic capacitor. It's like that yellow bubble here and just put it through completely very good it's good bend the leg and exactly the same you know how to solder now this one is written 47 n which is 47 nanofarad it goes here so this one has not something written on top but on the side oh sorry and on the side you can read 1NK400, so that's 1 nanofarad. K is for 10% tolerance, I think, so that's 1 nanofarad plus or minus 10%. And um, 400 volts, so that's a high voltage capacitor, but that will work fine here. Obviously you will have only 9 volts on this pedal. So that was 1 nanofarad, and this one is 10 nanofarad. Let's go to the round capacitors. So those are the micro range capacitors. You have two 10 microfarads and one, uh, yeah, one microfarad and two 10 microfarads. And these ones have an orientation. If you look at the board, you have a square pad and a round pad and the square pad has a plus written on it. And if you look closely, you'll see one leg is longer than the other. The longer leg is the plus leg and the smaller one is, or the shorter one is the minus leg and it's written on the capacitor as well. You have a continuous area with a minus sign here pointing at the direction of the smallest leg. So this small leg goes to the round hole and the long leg goes to the plus square hole, like this. So be really careful when you put those, because if you put them in reverse, it will either not work or explode, which is not good, definitely. All right, oh, I forgot one megaohm resistor here. I'm gonna solder it really quick. So just a few tips, if you made a mistake at that point, here is what you can do. Let's say this solder, this component is wrong. Let's say I put 10K instead of one meg. Um, you have two solutions. The first one is the desoldering pump. It's not the best one. It's good when you have lots of solder to remove, but not for precise work in my mind. Um, you just have to put the iron against the solder and put the desoldering pump on the solder too and just click on the button. So let's see how it works. There it goes. As you can see, desoldered a bit of the component leg here. And maybe from the other side, if we can wiggle it a bit. Yeah. It's still solder on it. But it's still better than what it was before. Yeah, I can't remove it. Well, that's an example of a failed desoldering. It's not desoldered enough. And the other option you have is, let me reflow it. I'm gonna put some solder back. The other option is the um, desoldering bread. Sorry. This is basically sucking the solder inside it. So put it against the solder joint and you put the soldering iron on it and it's usually clearer. You get less solder afterward because it's sucking all the solder in here 
We have no solder now. Maybe even this time. This one's not fine enough. Yeah, you'll see. And now the component leg is removed. So I'm gonna put it back because I need it. I'm gonna go solder it back. But at least you see how it works. Now we have two types of components left. Uh, we have the IC here, the LM741. Um, basically that's a 741 IC. LM is just for the manufacturer. And you also have the U741 and UA741. And that's exactly the same component, but from different sources. And you have the two potentiometers here. So let's start with the IC. ICs are loads of transistors inside a small box. That's an IC. And it's it could be really smaller than that. Uh, it has eight legs, looks like a spider somewhat. It has e either a half moon um, hole here on its front or it has a small dot on one side. So if you look at the side, so I I'm not sure you can read it. Um, I'm gonna try to focus now. My phone is really bad at focusing. So put some light. Here it is, you see? You, you do not have the half moon hole in here, but you have the dot here. So the dot indicates the pin number one, which is the top left one here. When you hold it like that, with the dot on the, at the top of the component, this pin, the very first one on the top left, will be the pin number one. Anyway, the pin number one will go into the square hole here, so that's how you'd place it. But if you're not really sure about the orientation of the component, you can also use a component socket. This has eight pins as well, and you can solder it so that you just have to push the component through the socket instead of having to solder it. And trust me, that's a good practice. Uh, it's not mandatory. If you're confident enough, you can just not use that. I'm gonna solder it. So I just have a bit of wiggling solder here and I'm holding the component without touching the pad I'm gonna solder, otherwise I'm gonna burn myself. Here it is. One solder is enough to just hold the component, or the socket at least. I'm gonna do the eight other pins. So that's not mandatory, but um, that's how I go most of the time. Just socketing components. Because you never know, if you put it back well, that way you can just remove it and put it the right way. So I'm gonna put it like that. Correct orientation. Here it goes. And now we just have the potentiometers to place on the board. Pots are easier because you have the holes uh, marking here. You have where you need to place the body of the component and you have three legs. You just have to follow the uh, what's written on the circuit board. So let's check. We need a A100K, which is a logarith logarithmic 100K photometer. That will be the volume pot. Let me see if I have one here. Nope, not this one. A100K. And we do C1 meg, which is a one mega uh, reverse logarithmic potentiometer. And that's for the drive control. I know I have one somewhere. Six hours later. I'm gonna use a C500K. That means I will have less distortion, which is quite unfortunate, but that will still work. And that's what we need. If you ordered the components I've uh, shown on the build documents, you will have a longer legs, longer legs here. Uh, this one is meant to be soldered with wires. Uh, that's not what I recommended, but I don't have the correct ones, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna put some wire here, just to have it look like it's a PCB mount potentiometer. And I'll be right back. So what's easy, you look at the pot, C500K. So that should be C1 meg if you have one, C1M. You put it right there through the board. 
and do the same for the other one. Well, A100K, which is logarithmic. So that just changes how it reacts along all the, when you turn it basically. So it will react quickly, um, slowly, linearly, which is for the B letter. And that's basically a variable resistor. So you have the resistance from one leg to the other one, the outer legs. If the resistance will have 100K from there to there. And the middle one, you moving it along between the minimum, like the left leg, all the way to the right leg, and that's continuous. So that way you're basically sweeping the resistor, the resistance value between pin 1 and 2, or pin 2 and 3. Anyway, um, once they're placed, just turn the board. You could also solve them for the other side, if you prefer, that's exactly the same. And now the last part, we need to put some wires on here. So you have the DC barrel jack that will go there. So plus and minus, which is a power supply for the whole board, 9 volt power supply. You have the input and ground for the input jacks and the input jack, sorry, and output and ground for the output jack. So I'm going to use some wires here. I strongly suggest you to color code uh, the different wires so you can you can basically see which one is ground right away. And if you're color blind, just choose colors you can clearly see if you have some. So I'm gonna cut three lengths of wire, like four or five centimeters, to have some margin. The black ones are gonna be the ground. Most of the time, black stands for ground. And a red one for the 9 volt supply. And I'm gonna use some yellow one for the input and output jacks. Now, you need to strip the wire using our wire stripper. So that's an automatic one, it's really easy to use. If you don't have one, well, that's a good excuse to order one right now. Now, if you want to solder the wires, you take it. So for the DC power supply, you have a square hole with a plus, which is the red, and a minus hole but with, with a round square, um, which is the ground black wire. So I'm going to put it there. You want it to go through, but uh, not just uh, there's a metal I mean you just want the wire to go through not the plastic around it and I'm gonna cut a bit more solder because I don't have any more and just put in contact solder it and cut the excess wire and you just do the same for the other hole round hole means ground and same goes for the input and output jacks the ground is the round hole, and the square hole will be the signal, so that's why you put the color one, so the yellow one in my case. And that's how the board should look at the end. Now the board is ready to be put inside its enclosure, but I've already shoot the video for the enclosure, so that's here. And I'm gonna make a video cut, and you'll go directly through the process of building and drilling the enclosure. Now it's time to drill the enclosure, or at least prepare it for drilling. I'm using a plain enclosure, nothing really special here, uh, no painted one. You can use a painted enclosure if you want. And I just printed that little sheet that would help me to drill it properly. So, how to use that? First you'll need to cut uh, following the lines here. Now. You'll use some tape to center properly the two different sheets. So one is for the front of the canal. I'm gonna center it vertically here. There. And it needs to be centered from top to bottom, some space on the enclosure. So it's like one millimeter here, one millimeter here. And also left, right. Otherwise you will have knobs too much on the left or too much on the right. 
and it needs to be properly centered, otherwise you'll have uh, misdrilled holes and everything. So I strongly suggest you take your time here. That's how it looks like. And here you will center it from left to right, but not uh, from top to bottom, because I designed it so that you align the bottom line of the enclosure with the bottom line of the paper. And that's how you'll need it. If you drill too much on the top, you'll have to make higher, well, um, bigger holes, and it would certainly hit the PCB card with a solder before. So I'm gonna do the same. A little bit of, of tape here. First, I'm gonna align the bottom. So here I'm way too much on the right. You can see it. Sure, it is. And do the same with the top. So the top is not aligned with the top of the enclosure, but the bottom is, and that's what's important here. So be really careful when you do that step, otherwise you won't fit the jack or anything. So that's how it looks. And now you just have to take your favorite drill, take Two millimeter um, drill bit, put it inside, and you'll just put it above the small little two millimeters holes, well, markings you have here. You just make one twist like that. That way, you'll just mark the enclosure where you want to drill later on. So this one, uh, I shouldn't have done it actually because um, we're gonna do the uh, MXR distortion plus pedal, so it has two knobs. You don't have to drill the center one. If you have only one knob on your pedal, uh, which is the case for the Acapulco Gold style first pedal or the boost pedal, you'll just drill one here. Otherwise, you don't drill here, and you do the other ones. So if you have two knobs, like the Vibe, or the MXR Distortion Plus pedal, the Overdrive, you just have to drill once here and once here. And you have the LED and 3PDT foot switch here. Um, input jack, output jack, and DC jack in the center. Now that the front side and the top side are marked, we can drill with the 2mm bit all the different holes. Then we'll use a step drill. Um, if you have a step drill bit like this one, it's really handy to have if you do lots of pedals. Otherwise, just have a set of drill and you take the correct diameters. And we're gonna just drill at the right uh, size. So, all the info are in the assembly guide. You'll have all the diameters for all the knobs and all, and all the stuff. Uh, you'll be you'll be used to it <laughs> after a while. You'll know all the size for the holes you need. And yeah, I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll show you how it looks. And here is how the pedal looks. So all the holes are drilled correctly and we can now proceed to mounting the LED and foot switch and the board inside the pedal. Now we are at the final assembly stage. I have the drilled enclosure, I have the circuit board. Let's put it together. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna bend the leads first so that it fits. I'm gonna put the business card inside the, the enclosure like this. So it's ugly looking, <laughs> definitely it is. You could use different techniques to make it beautiful, like, um, Permanent marker, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can use different techniques like UV printing, laser engraving, you have different stuff. And to put the parts in it, you just have to well, put it first in, into the enclosure, put the washer, and then the nut. It's tight, you can hold the enclosure with the pot. Let's now put the LED holder in place. Um, if you order through the website the Tide Electronics, yours should look like this. And just put it here. 
passion through. Uh, I believe it's a 6.5 millimeter hole. Maybe I forgot to riddle it. Yep, maybe. No, it looks fine to me. That's definitely my mistake here. There it is. At the time it's um, slightly moving. So you could put a little bit of glue inside. Just a hole of glue. Actually, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna need to put the foot switch inside the anchor. So the foot switch has different uh, rows and columns and you want the foot switch to be placed like this. So everything, every pin is horizontal, not like this vertical. It should be horizontal. You have two nets with those. Those are excellent foot switches. I've never had an issue with those. It's not the cheapest ones, but uh, yeah, they're great. So you put, remove everything, you put one nut, then the locking washer, one with the little uh, teeth inside, put it through the enclosure, here, the flat washer and the tightening nut here. One second, I'm gonna tighten it. I just want it to be perfectly aligned inside. Here it goes. Spot on. Now I need to put the DC power supply. So I'm gonna put one which fits from the outer, from the, sorry. I'm gonna use this uh, DC jack for the power supply. But you may want to use the one that has the nut outside and not inside. So that's the link I put on the bill of material. This one goes from the outside and you see if you have any issue, you need to desolder it to remove it. So that's not the best practice, but it looks better. That's why I'm using those. It's easier to use the ones with the nuts going outside. And I'm going to use a uh, flat pair of pliers just to push it that way from the inside. Now I can put the two um, input and output jacks. So I'm gonna get those. Well, these are the jacks I'm using. One side is slanted, so you can see it from the top here. It's not perfectly rectangle, so you want it placed that way with the slant be facing uh, the DC barrel connector here. I'm going to tighten it. Here it goes. So this one is correctly placed with the sunland facing the barrel here. And the other one should be the same orientation, but the slant will now face the outside of the pedal. That's how it should look now. I'm gonna put my secondary light. You can clearly see how they're made, how they're placed. All right, it's a bit blinding, so I'm gonna remove it. Let's put the light in it. I'm gonna use, now what do I have in my LED, LED is here. I'm gonna use this yellow LED here because the MXR distortion plus is yellow, right? So same good uh, with the capacitors. You have one, one leg is longer than the other. So the long leg is the plus and the smaller one is the minus. This is a bit tricky. Uh, that's why I should have done something better on my design. I'm gonna put the LED inside the LED holder. Oh yeah, right, that's already done. Okay, so that's here. So you'll have to follow the wiring diagram of the website. Um, you take the guide, you follow how the wiring should look. And I'm gonna do that with you. So here you have 
uh, if I recall, this is the um, this is the input. So input wire goes there. Output wire goes there and solder. You can shorten the wires if you prefer. You have the ground goes in here. And this ground goes in here. Good, it's looking good at the moment. Let's now put the LED. So the LED is already in place, but it needs something else. It needs a 4K7 resistor. So 4.7K uh, is 4,700 ohms. This one. So I'm gonna put it through where it's supposed to go here. Solder it, remove the leg. I'm gonna put it here. Just bend its leg around the minus, so the smallest, shortest um, LED leg. The LED leg, sorry, I'm, I'm way, <laughs> I'm so much used to seeing LED in French instead of LED because uh, we're not talking about LED like that in French so sorry if I make a mistake all the time <laughs> and all right you, we can now wire the um, the jack the power supply and everything so you have the red wire here it goes on the right um, pin on the outside pin this one is negative center so it goes negative to the center pin here that's how it looks have it clearly here but before soldering this we'll need to use some length of wire to go from the LED longer LED longer leg sorry to the um, DC barrel here so I'm gonna Cut a red wire because it's 9 volt, color coded and everything, which I didn't do on the French video. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make a small U channel here so that it holds so like firmly. Just all of it. It goes and now the other side goes through, sorry goes through the same right part of the connector. So both nine volts are tied together. And solder the red terminal, so the right terminal is for the positive side of the power supply. Now we need to use, uh, you can use some black wire because it will be ground, but I'm gonna use 
a, a wire that's completely stripped, if I can find one. Although I'm gonna wake one actually. So I'm gonna completely strip this wire, remove all the insulation here. And I'm gonna go from the DC barrel jack to both connections here on the jack. I'm gonna show it to you after one. I'm gonna solder here. Here and here. That's where it goes, both to the slant uh, pin and the top pin here. I'm going to remove the excess of wire here and there. Cool! Which is cool now, it, it should uh, turn on the LED. Yep, uh, here it is. So now you can test with a power supply if you want, just to be sure that the LED will light up. It does, so it's working at the time, but we still need to wire the input and output jack, otherwise you won't have any signal going through, even in bypass. So, let's go with some more... Actually, I'm gonna change the color, I'm gonna use orange, because I don't really like the orange color of these wires. I'm gonna use this length of wire, and same goes here. So the input jack will have one side correctly stripped and the other one will need a bit more length. Uh, you're gonna see why. So that's a bit longer strip. And just go through both connections on the foot switch here. Like that. I want you to go through and not touch what's in the middle. One blob of solder here, and one here. And now you have to put it through the left. I'm gonna bend it properly. You're gonna put it through the left um, connection on the input jack. Now with the output, sorry, I forgot to cut here. Now with the output wire, just strip it normally. One side goes here, solder it. Cut the X of wire. Be careful not to cut what you just made on the input jack, obviously. And now you should be able to just Gonna bend it that way. And it also goes to the left here. That's where the signal goes. There it goes. And it's done. So now I can try it. Here it goes my looper. I have that battery connector, which is handy. If you don't have of course, we have nearby. I'm gonna turn both knobs down all the way. And go into my amplifier. So you will just be capable of hearing how it sounds really quickly and if it works or not. So that's clean amp. And the setting is a drive. Here. So you have seen now going through with a bit more volume if needed. Because I'm using silicon diodes, this is the drive control. It's working! Alright. The well, pad is working, and it's cool news, fortunately. Now you can close the bottom lid. 
So it's not as gainy as it should be because I've used the wrong gain pot, uh, which is one of the few times where the gain pot value actually matters. Um, like if I used another value for the volume pot, it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't change the sound, but here it, it will. So the gain pot will affect uh, the amount of maximum gain you'll get from the pedal. Actually, the, on this particular circuit, you will have the same amount of drive, maximum drive, but not the minimum drive. So it will always be a little bit more distorted. So that's not too critical. So here are the four screws. And the last thing you can do is putting the knobs. So it just depends on what you like for knobs. So let's have a look at what I have in stock. Here my series a stock of knobs. <laughs> yeah, you will end up like this if you keep doing guitar pedals. This, these are the ones I've um, considered the best for this purpose. I'm gonna use those. So to put the knobs, you just have to turn both parts all the way down, and use a little screwdriver. Put the knobs on it, push it so that it fits, and you can choose where to place the minimum, so it should be right here. I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Congratulations, you just built yourself your first pedal. Now you can either build a few more and give to your friends, keep for yourself, or even learn to do better decoration techniques, because honestly it looks ugly in the video. Um, you can also flip them on reverb if you prefer for like one thousand dollars. Maybe someone will end up buying it, thinking it's a prototype. I don't know. Um, anyway, if you succeeded, leave it in the comment below. If you have any remark or questions, please feel free to comment in this video as well. Uh, I'm gonna try to answer to most uh, questions because I'm not really sure if I have the time to do so. Especially if the company grows, you'll have more and more people asking questions about uh, how to build your pedals, so um, I won't, I may not have all the time I want to <laughs> answer to you all, but anyway, you have forums online that will help you build your pedal and fix the soldering and everything, and the instruction guide should be enough to help you correctly build it anyway. Now I'm gonna leave, uh, have fun with the pedal, and if you want more nerd stuff, just follow Tom Cozy YouTube channel. Stay tuned for the next videos, cheers!